we're going to take a quick sneak peek at the Autosoft Use Vehicles software. I'll show you some of the key functionality that's in there and talk about how it might apply to some of the problems you're trying to solve. Let's talk first about acquiring a vehicle. The software is complete with a vehicle acquisition module. Now this is great because it lets you pick up a creditor's invoice for a vehicle. As you can see here, Pickles Auctions, 15 grand for this particular Holden Berliner. One of the problems this system solves though is it has a vehicle centric database attached to it, which means that you not only pick up the record for the creditor transaction, you also pick up the details of the vehicle which are stored in a separate database table. That vehicle record has all the things such as the purchase price and costs and the final sale and customer attached to it. When we're adding vehicles, there's a, a web service called the Search VML, which is a subscription based product which integrates into the Autosoft Use Vehicle software. Search VML contains thousands of vehicles. If I want to find an 07 VE Calais, for example, I first click in Holden. I can then select the year I'm looking for, which is 2007. And you can see here, it's showing me the shortlist of all the Holdens in 2007. If I then select Calais, it narrows it down even more again until I find the Calais V, which is the 6 litre V8 version. I can select that straight from the list and put it onto my vehicle database. Now the great thing about that is it brings over all of the information about that particular vehicle as well. So I don't have to go and look any of that up. When I have a vehicle in my database, I can then associate all the costs relevant to that vehicle back against it in one place. This helps me when I'm trying to sell the vehicle as I can see how much that particular vehicle owes me at that given time. I can also have things such as warranty provisions and estimated orders assigned to this vehicle also. There's a GP tab here which shows me, once I'm sold, how much money I've made on that particular vehicle. Reports, such as the vehicle sales report, help me to see on a vehicle by vehicle basis what sort of money I'm, in, I'm making out of these particular vehicles. When it's time to sell your vehicles, you've got tools such as deposit on vehicle here and the sell vehicle or invoicing module for vehicles. Now the good thing about deposit on vehicle is it allows you to take a certain amount of money from a certain customer and reserve it against a car so that car then becomes under deposit and you can see the money which is sitting against it. So it allows you to manage the cash and that money sits in a, in a clearing account until such time as the rest of the money is received and the vehicle is delivered. So the sell vehicle once you get to that point, it allows you to raise an invoice, like a professional looking tax invoice for the customer straight out of the system. And it allows you to put on there the, the details of the car you're selling and also allows you to, to take a trade back off them. And the good thing about adding the trade-ins is that it, um, it basically allows you to add a traded vehicle back into your database module so you can take something like this old Holden uh, Commodore here which they're trading on there to buy their Honda Civic puts it on stock now one of the the good things that the system solves is the notional GST so if advanced automotive services are a GST non-registered client it allows you to take up the notional GST on the trade um, if they were registered for GST, it allows you to claim that immediately. And also you've got things like payout, um, things here for financial uh, companies. Now what happens is if you say a vehicle has finance um, payable on it, of course it, it'll factor this into the invoice. And as you do the exchange on the vehicles, you can bring the finance payable into the equation and record that obligation to pay out the, the customer's vehicle as part of the deal and that factors all into the final settlement price which you're going to ask for on the vehicle sale tax invoice that you can print straight out of the, the computer. This here's a sneak preview of the Autosoft system for you. Let's take a look at the workshop module. What we have in here is a booking diary as you can see here in the booking diary we can add jobs to any day of the week. Let's create a booking. In the booking I can select from any of the vehicles I have in my vehicle database. 
I can also add a new vehicle and a new customer at this stage. I can add a service code from my codes database onto the job, which has preloaded all the repair order comments and invoice item notes for me. I can add additional parts to the invoice. I can add additional labor. I can also add consumables and even sublet repairs. Upon closing the booking, I can see it now appears in the booking diary. On the day the work's to be performed, I can see the job in the job control center. In here, with the click of a button, I can print out the job card. The job card gives the mechanic specific instructions on the work to be completed and allows the customer to sign off on the work order. After the job card's been printed, the repair order turns into work in progress. The progress of the job can be tracked by the service manager in the job control center. Through the duration of the job, labor can be recorded against the work order for each mechanic. This tracks the number of hours worked and can be compared against the number of hours charged for each job. Additional notes can be added to the repair order. These notes can be given to the client on picking up the vehicle and can be retained with the vehicle in the notes for the next service. When the job's complete, the status of the job can be changed to complete. Once again, this can be tracked in the job center and SMS can be sent here direct to the customer. Upon picking up the vehicle, the service manager can once again quickly and easily access the job for the job control center, at which time the status is invoice and an invoice is ready be, to be prepared. The invoice can be printed and closed and reopened again if changes need to be made. Alternatively, it can just be finalized at the point of sale when the customer picks up the vehicle. An invoice can also be seen on the screen. A JPEG graphic of your business letterhead can be put in here at the top. Customers details, details of the invoice, vehicle, work performed, sublets, parts and consumables added to the job, and finally, a subtotal down the bottom, and the notes that we wanted to give to the customer on picking up the vehicle can all be seen. At this stage, a customer, if they're either account, can have this invoice finalized and charged against their trade account. If they're cash, or even if they are account, they can pay now. A point of sale payment screen appears, at which time the method of payment can be recorded against the invoice, the final kilometers entered for the vehicle, the invoice is printed, and the job is complete. The workshop system addresses the problem of finding the vehicle history. The vehicle history screen allows you to select any vehicle from your database and view the work history on that vehicle. We can easily see the work that's been performed on this Toyota Camry and we can easily get the full job back up onto the screen and see the work that was performed. Likewise, because the database is vehicle centric, the notes I made on the last job still stay with the vehicle so I can advise the customer of the work which may need to be performed. The job codes address the problem of having to rewrite or retype the details of a common service over and over again. The job code library allows you to preset this information, type it once, and then just simply add or edit as required as you use this job code over and over again. The workshop system also solves the problem of having to handwrite invoices as a professional printed invoice can be prepared straight off a standard laser printer or inkjet printer onto A4 standard copy paper without the need for letterhead. From an accounts point of view, we have both debtors and creditors. Each customer has a debtor file set up in the system. We can quickly review and add to these. The main purpose of debtors is to track the customer's debtor history. These can also be set up for cash customers as well. The report module allows us to print a debtor's trial balance so we can see which customers owe us money. 
of course we want to be able to receipt that money. This can be easily done with the debtor receipts module. We can see the jobs outstanding and apply the amount we've been paid accordingly. We can also record banking details for the customer on the system. The main problem the system addresses as far as debtors is the easy ability to output statements. Just like the invoice, the statement can be prepared and printed on plain paper with a laser or inkjet printer. The statement can also be emailed, faxed or printed direct from the system. If you do have letterhead paper, pre-printed statement paper can be selected. You can also run the statement just to show outstanding transactions. The statement looks professional and is easy to read. It gives your customer the date, reference number and amounts of the invoices they owe you. From a creditor's point of view, the system works largely the same way. We can have any number of creditors set up here and their details are recorded against the creditor file. We can also see the history of purchases made with these creditors. The creditors system tracks who you owe money to. You can easily add a creditor invoice to the system. It allows you to directly put parts onto the creditor invoice through my part system. And for those using Autosoft Standard, you can even post direct to any general ledger account that exists in the system. The creditors are directly interfaced into the ledger and also into the stock ledger to allow you to put those parts onto jobs. This time we can see the creditors report and this is who we owe money to. Let's take a look at the parts shop here. A quick click on the name parts shows me in detail the transactions that I owe them money for. And of course I can easily pay them using the creditor payment system and that allows me to track the payments I've made to the creditors. It even prints off a creditor's remittance advice. The general ledger in Autosoft Standard is directly interfaced to the front end of the system. This allows transactions to passively accrue in the general ledger without you having to do any additional entries. We can see here for sales service labour all of the individual workshop invoices that have been performed in the workshop. One of the handy things here is a double click takes you straight back to the source documents. You can easily review the different accounts that exist within your system. You'll also notice there are income, cost of sales and overhead accounts in here that allow you to track things like your overhead expenses such as accounting fees. There's also accounts for assets, liabilities and equity. So we can see here the transactions that have accrued for the bank account. The problem this solves, it allows you to prepare statements for your accountant and for you to review as the owner of the business. We can see here a profit and loss statement that's been prepared straight off this Autosoft database. We can review the reports for any date in the past. The system runs off a calendar and there's no purge and roll required. The profit and loss is tidy and easy to review. It gives us total income, total cost of sales, gross profit, expenses, including salaries and wages, and also gives us a graph to analyze the trends of our sales, cost of sales and expenses.
You can also provide your accountant with a balance sheet, which breaks down your financial position. And most important of all, it addresses the problem of GST reporting. You can produce your GST figures in either cash or accruals method and plug the totals directly into your BAS statement. Your accountant may want to know the transactions that make up these totals. They can easily be seen with the GST transactions report where either yourself or your accountant can quickly and easily review the transactions which you're including in your BAS to make sure you're either paying the right amount of GST or collecting the correct refund. From a cash and end of day point of view, there's a till reconciliation and the ability to do bank undeposited funds. This allows you to review every transaction that's been prepared in the system provides the method of payment for which you took payment for these transactions and allows you to post them direct into the bank reconciliation. The bank reconciliation collects all of the transactions that go in and out of the bank general ledger account and you can have multiple banks set up. A simple tick and flick back and forth to your statement allows you to prepare a bank reconciliation. A bank reconciliation report can easily be printed and placed on file for future reference.